the northern suburbs of Bangkok. What a finals day it's been so far. All three finals completed have been one in three thrilling games. Next up is the men's doubles and it's Takoro Hoki and Yugo Kobayashi, the reigning world champions up against Fajar Alfien and Mohamed Arian Ardianto in their third final of four tournaments played. Well, when we look at the men's doubles draw from quarterfinal stage, the big shock was the loss of both the number one and two seeds. Three-time former world champions, the number one seeds, their first ever loss in their seventh meeting uh, to the Danes, and the Olympic champions, the number two seeds, who were the two-time defending champions, uh, lost to the Olympic bronze medalists Aaron Shah and So We Eek. So uh, by semi-final stage, we had four seeds and four different nationalities and it's only the second time this year that we've had four different nationalities at semi-final stage for men's doubles. Well, when we look at the race to Guangzhou standings at the moment, Alfian and Ardianto, as you can see, are currently number five. Whether they win or lose today's final will go up three places to number two. Hoki and Kobayashi are way down at 23 at the moment. Uh, they will either go to 11 or 12, so they still won't make the top 10. But one of the semi-finalists, Astrup and Erasmussen, they will go up from 13 to number eight. So there'll be a fair bit of movement on the race to Guangzhou standings after this week in Bangkok. Toyota Gazoo Racing Thailand Open 2022, part of the HSBC BWF World Tour Super 500. Finals! the gold medal at the World Championships in Huelva in Spain last December. Making their third appearance at the Thailand Open and prior to this year they've never won a match at this particular tournament. Here they are in the final. Had a wonderful end to last year. Five finals in the last six tournaments of the year. Winning four of them including the World Tour finals and then back that up a couple of weeks later with the gold medal at the World Championships. And please welcome Fajal Alfin and Muhammad Rian Adianto from Indonesia. The number five seeds, Fajal Alfin and Mohamed Rian Adianto. A third final in their sixth tournament of the year. But more importantly, perhaps it's the third final in four consecutive tournaments. And that says to me that they are in great form. They won the Swiss Open, lost in the final of the Korean Open, and then went to the Badminton Asia Championships. They got a bronze medal there. And now here in Bangkok, yet another final. And today, they are trying to become the first men's doubles pair this year to win two World Tour titles. Well, this, I can tell Ladies you, will be a fourth meeting between these two pairs and the previous three. Is permitted in the stadium. And Ardianto no have will look won out two of them. But more importantly, it's the last two encounters, the last time was the quarterfinal of the Welcome French 750 event have in black Paris. Or red. Two close games, as you can see, 45 black. minutes for well, that one in the it is black. Stade Pierre that de side. Coubertin. If taken side, Fajar, Hugo receives, have a good match. 
So the first job of our umpire, uh, uh, Beck from Belgium. The toss of the coin, and I didn't quite see that, Steve. Oh, yeah. I didn't see it either. I'm guessing that the Japanese pair must have won the toss and decided to choose ends. This is Takoro Hoki. He's 26 years of age, as indeed is his partner. He was born in Yamaguchi in the southwest tip of Hongshu, the main island of Hongshu. They're enjoying their first week as world number threes. And one of the few pairs to have contested two consecutive world championship men's doubles finals. Silver medalists in Basel, followed up by the gold medal last year. Their first final of the year, as we look at the left-handed Yugo Kobayashi from Miyagi Prefecture on the east coast of Hongshu. Three quarter finals prior to this tournament. Now they went the full distance in their first two rounds and again in the semi-final against the world championship bronze medalist Kim Astrup and Azaz Anas Rasmussen dropped the opening game in yesterday's semi-final. So to their opponents, the number five seeds from Indonesia. And this is Mohamed Orian Adianto, also 26 years of age. And he and his partner, currently number seven in the world ranking, but did spend 30 weeks in total across two different spells as world number fives. Sixth time that they played the Thailand Open. Ready to play. Fajar Alfian, a year older than the other three men on court at the age of 27 from Bangdung in West Java. And looking at their matches through to today's final, well, once they've been taken the full distance, that was in the quarterfinal against Matsui and Takauchi. Semi-final was against the Olympic bronze medalist Aaron Cha and Sui Ik, who had put out the Olympic champions, the young Wan Chi Lin, who had won both of the Thailand Opens at the beginning of last year. So as I was telling you, our court officials, Bert van Horenbeck of Belgium and Jörg Hupitz of Germany. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Fajar Alfian and Mohamed Rian Ardianto, Indonesia. And on my left, Takuro Hoki and Yugo Kobayashi, Japan. Fajar Alfian served to Yugo Kobayashi, Love all. Play. So it is the Indonesians, the Asian Games silver medalists and World Championship bronze medalists from Basel in 2019 who are nearest to us against the reigning world champions, Hoki Kobayashi. in Paris last year and when the now world champions lost to the Indonesians and that was the world champions only loss in those last six tournaments of the year prior to the final
Oh, that's brilliant. Wonderful play from Alfian. Serve, serve, bro. One, three. If I recall correctly, at the last two Thailand Open, Alfian had blue oh. hair. <laughs> that's a possibility. Serve, serve, bro. Four, one. That's a great smack. Oh, it's just long. Yeah. There's a challenge here, though, Roger, from Althea. Challenges call out. I know you had Five. finished your commentating duties by the time of the men's doubles yesterday, Steen, but I can tell you that I thought that Yugo Kobayashi, the left-hander, I thought he was struggling to find the sort of form that we saw him play with at the end of last year. Yeah, I saw some of the last rallies in the, the semi-final and they were good enough to, to earn them a spot here, but I also... Uh, I'm online with you, Jill, I think, and I think there's actually there's they would like very much to win this match Six, because since two. the World Championships, they've played three Indonesian Five. combinations, three different combinations. They've lost all three matches um, with the uh, narrowest of margin in the third game. And the Indonesians were not present at the uh, World Championships, so it's all sort of like seeking to validate that it's, um, Seven, they two. are good. Hoki and uh, Kobayashi. I think that's a very good point. Because the entire Indonesian team pulled out of the World Championships. Well, this has been a very good start by the Japanese pair. Too wide. Serve, serve, but three, eight. Well, there's only been one Japanese pair who have won the Thailand Open in oh. the past, and that was an all Japanese final four years ago. Komora and Sonoda. Nintendo and Watanabe Four, in the final. Yes. Too flat, it's gone long. Serves over. Line four. Good flick serve. Just wide. Ten, four. Well, we can see there's um, strapping on the uh, right leg of uh, Alfian, and he was sort of like uh, 
twisting and turning his um, lower back. I wonder if um, he's fully fit. Oh, that's a beautiful one. Oh, my goodness. Well, having played a beautiful uh, backhand, Al He then smashed he's cross court. Fit. No. Yeah, he's calling for the doctor. Al Fien. Yeah, struggling to move. This is perhaps why his partner is going for the smash across court, hoping his opponent wasn't alert to it. He's making no attempt at moving at that point. No. Well, the coach is on as well. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. And he's not uh, really discussing too much. Harry Piangari, the Indonesian coach, Thank you. talking a little bit to Arianto. Well, this is a huge pity for all Indonesian fans. There's no question about that. Because I think that you really have to be at full fitness, don't you, to beat current world champions yeah. most of the time? And we saw it, the um, the flick serve before um, he was um, sort of um, not going all out. Uh, this is yeah, yeah. this is not going to uh, hold up, I think. Oh. No. He's going to call it a day. It's a huge pity for a lot of reasons. I mean, I had worked four. out. He's he's calling it a day now. Calling for the doctor. Because if the Indonesians had won this match, then we were guaranteed that the five titles would go to players and players from five different nations. It happened here at the Thailand Open back in 2004. And then it happened at the last two Thailand Opens in January last year but this i think he's had enough it's a real shame there was no sign i didn't think in his semi-final yesterday against the malaysians char and so yeah, he's he's calling the game today that's yeah. very very unfortunate maybe a problem in the warm-up that's sad very sad for the Indonesians. Hockey and Kobayashi get their first World Tour title of the year. 13-4 up in the first. Only nine minutes played. Uh, Hockey doesn't really know whether to smile or what. That was not the way they wanted to no. uh, win. No. It must have been something that's come up overnight. A bad movement or something. Yeah, what a shame. So for Hoki and Kobayashi, well, it's a fourth World Tour tournament title and their first Super 500 title. They were, have been in a 500 event previously in the Korean Open back in 2018. Uh, this is a shame. Well, these things happen in sport. You can't control that. Yeah, watch Alfian. No attempt to arch the back no. and intercept the shuttle.
Well, we've got a lot of tournaments coming up. Only a, a couple of weeks time until there's two events in Indonesia, the Indonesia Masters uh, 500 event and then the Indonesian Open, a 1000 event. And of course, Alfian and Adianto want to be fit for their home events. So with an injury issue, it's probably a very wise move to call it a day. I hope to get fit for the next tournaments on the HSBC BWF World Tour. It's also disappointing, Steen, for the Malaysians, Chart and Sawiik, because, you know, they played the semi-final. Yeah. You know, uh, but you can't predict when you're going to get injured. No. Nope. And that, that's what I mean, must be something maybe he slept. Um, Awkwardly or. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully uh, nothing too bad. Um, we also saw Asan and Sichuan from Indonesia struggle a little bit against the Danes. Um, so. And of course, with the. Indonesian team being in the final of the Thomas Cup. Not that this men's doubles pair, they were selected to play the fourth match of the final tie, uh, but it didn't get that far. No. But it's the accumulation of matches and the tension and the build up. And it the, is. You know, it all takes its toll. Traveling, being away from home for a long time, because that's what's been the case for many of these players here also due to um, the um, COVID crisis. Yeah. So the presentation party ready for the presentation of the men's doubles finalists. And as we wait for that, perhaps we can quickly talk about our last final to come because of course we've got the reigning world champions Pua Vernukro and Tevrak Tanachai against the two-time former world champions Ladies Chen Chi Wei and Wang Yashio. Welcome to the one presentation Unfortunately, ceremony. I don't think we've got time to talk about that because I think the finals. presentation is Toyota about to happen. Gazoo Here we go. Racing Thailand Open 2022. The runner-up of men's double finals are Faja Alvia and Muhammad Rian Adianto from Indonesia. Well, three finals in four individual tournaments played. It has taken its toll, sadly, on Faja Alvia. And the Alvian. winners of men's double finals are Takuro Hoki and Yugo Kobayashi from Japan. The champions, Takuro Hoki and Yugo Kobayashi. Not the way they would have wanted to win. May I invite General Udomde Sitabu, Honorable Advisory of the Badminton but Association of Thailand. Only the, the second ever pair from Japan to win King this Thailand Open title. Four years after Takeshi Kimura, Keigo Sonoda lifted the trophy here in Bangkok in 2018. Disappointed Indonesians, Alfian and Ardianto. But the champions, Takuro Koki and Yugo Kobayashi. A fourth World Tour title. Thank you very much. May I invite Dr. Kong Sak Yodmani. Governor of the Sport Authority of Thailand to present the trophy.
well, for Hoki and Kobayashi. Eight different men's doubles pair to win in the eighth yeah, World White, Tour Mr. tournament of the year. And, and that's Tyler. always very nice to see that the discipline is the prize money. wide open and very competitive. So as the reigning world champions Takora Hoki and Yugo Kobayashi take leave of center stage, we look forward to our last final of the day. It's the reigning world champions Puavara Nukro and Teirat Tanachai up against the two-time former world champions Cheng Shi Wei and Wang Yaxiong.
So welcome back to the Impact Arena in Nontabori in the northern suburbs of Bangkok. So disappointment for Indonesia and especially for Fajar Alfian, that bad back, forcing him to withdraw in the opening game of the men's doubles final with his partner Ardianto against Hoki and Kobayashi. Well, our last final is about to happen and you don't get much better than this, do you? It's the reigning world champions Puavaranukro and Teirak Tanachai up against the two-time former world champions Cheng Chi Wei and Wang Yaxiong. The number one against the number two seeds. Well, when we look at the draw from the quarterfinal stage of the uh, mixed doubles, uh, there it is. I can tell you that five seeds, five different nationalities, and all four quarterfinal matches in two games, which suggests that it's the least competitive at the quarterfinal stage. But you look at the semi-final stage and you've got all three Olympic medalists plus the reigning world champions. They are the top 